Hi, I am Antaryami and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain the concept of population growth in ecosystem. So let's start. So what is population growth? Population growth refers to how the number of individuals in a population increase or decrease over a time. So the population growth particularly controlled by the rate at which new individuals are added that is through birth and immigration or the rate at which individuals leaves the population through the process of death and emigration. Now this population can be divided into or classified into two different types that is open population and closed population. So open population is in which immigration and emigration occurs. So the example are the migratory birds or any group of animals in which there is a immigration and emigration is possible. Whereas closed population is where movement into and out of the population doesn't occur. For example life in, inside an aquarium. Let's consider an experiment of an organism that has a simple life cycle such as population of fresh, freshwater hydra. So this example can help us to understand the population growth dynamics. Now we define the population size at a given time t as nt, where n represents the number of individuals and t is the time. Now, in the lab experiment, the population is closed population and the population only changes as a result of new birth and deaths. So there is no emigration or there is no movement into or outside the ecosystem. We can define the number of new hydra produced over a period of one day as B. So the number of hydra whichever the amount is produced that is B and the number of hydra dying over the same period is the D. Let us assume that the initial population is very small. So N0 is equal to 100. So 0 refers to the time at the beginning. Let us assume the population has produced 40 new individuals that is the B is equal to 40 and 10 of the original 100 hydra were died in the same time. So D is equal to 10. The population size at the end of one day then will be calculated as N1 is equal to N0 which is the original population at time T plus B that is the individual that is newly produced minus D that is the number of individual that have died. So that is equal to 100 plus 40 minus 10 which results in 130. So this is the new population as N1 or after one day of time. So now the population size is 130 and if we assume that population is growing at a constant rate then how we can measure the B and the D in the population for day 2. So let's understand or try to analyze how we can calculate the population for day 2. To measure the B and D we have to calculate the birth rate and death rate. So the birth rate can be calculated by dividing the number of hydra that is born during the day 1 by the initial population size that is B divided by N0 that is equal to the birth is 40 whereas the original population is 100 so 40 divided by 100 that is equal to 0 0.4 this is denoted as small b which is the per capita birth rate that is how many individuals were reproduced or produced per individual the per capita birth rate b can be defined as the average number of births per individual during the time period t Likewise, the per capita death rate can be denoted as small d and can be calculated as d divided by n0 that is equal to 10 divided by 100. So 10 is the number of dying individual divided by 100 which is the original population at time t. So that is equal to 0 0.1. Now if we start with nt that is population of hydra at time t 
then to calculate the number of hydra reproducing over the following time that is t plus 1 or after one day we must multiply the per capita birth rate that is small b by the total number of hydra at time t that is n t and subtracting the number of hydra that is dying over the same time interval <coughs> so it can be represented as n t plus 1 is equal to n t plus b into n t minus d into n t so if we so if we insert the values then it can be n1 is equal to 100 plus 0 0.4 into 100 minus 0 0.1 into 100 and which is equal to 130 so we will get the same result as we calculated earlier now in the same pattern if we calculate the n2 that is number of individuals after day 2 then here the original population will be 130 so 130 plus 0 0.4 into 130 minus 0 0.1 into 130 that is equal to 169 so here the n is the preceding population size we can calculate the rate of change in the population that is the population growth rate by subtracting nt from both side of the equation and it will result in the nt plus 1 is equal to nt plus b into nt minus d into nt which will become nt minus 1 minus nt is equal to b into nt minus d into nt as you can see that here the nt is cancelled or we can also rewrite it as and t minus 1 minus nt is equal to b minus d into nt. When we apply this growing hydra population, then n1 minus n0 will be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1 into 100 that is equal to 30. That is the per capita growth rate for n1. And n2 minus n1 is equal to 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1 into 130 that is 39. So this is the per capita growth rate for n2. If we represent the change in population size as delta n and the change is time as delta t then we can rewrite the equation as delta n by delta t is equal to b minus d into nt. The resulting pattern of population size as a function of time is referred to as geometric population growth which forms a j shaped population growth curve. So in this figure we can see there is a j shaped population growth curve. In this figure we can see that change in size of a hypothetical population of hydra over the time is represented in green line. So the change in population size that is delta n for a given time interval that is delta t differs as a function of time t as indicated by the slopes of the line segment shown in orange. Because per capita birth rate and death rates that is small b and small d are constant we can simply define it as a new parameter that is small r which can be equal to b minus d. So the value r is the per capita growth rate here. The equation become now delta n by delta t is equal to r into capital N t. Thus the population growth rate delta n by delta t defines the unit change in population size per unit change in time. With a population that is growing geometrically, the rate of population growth is continuously increasing as the population size increases. So this population is now growing geometrically. Population ecologist often rep represents the process of birth and death as instantaneous rate and the population growth as continuous process rather than on defined time steps. As we explained till now, we explain the population growth on defined time steps that is n1, n2 like that. But this is not in the case of real time situation. So population ecologist often represent the process of birth and death as instantaneous rate and that's why the model is present as differential equation that is 
dn by dt is equal to small r into capital N where the value r now is instantaneous per capita growth rate or otherwise called the intrinsic rate of population growth and the resulting equation is referred to as model of exponential population growth. So the exponential population growth in a population is represented by the equation dn by dt is equal to small r into capital N. This model can also be expressed in term of exponential form as nt is equal to n0 e to the power rt where the n0 is the initial population at time t equal to 0 and e is the base of natural log logarithm. Now in this figure we can see that there are three different uh, possibilities that is for r equal to 0 when b and d are equal there is no change in population size that is birth rate and death rate is equal here. For r greater than 0 the population size is exponentially increases that is here the birth rate is higher than death rate whereas for r smaller than 0 the population size exponentially decreases because of higher death rate. Exponential growth is characteristic of population inhibiting favorable environment at low population density such as during the process of colonization and establishment of new environment because here the population size is low and there is a unlimited resource to utilize. But no population continues to grow indefinitely as the density population increases demand for resources also increases and this demand leads to shrinking of resources because of higher consumption rates which result in increased mortality and decreased fecundity. So as population size increases growth rate eventually is slow and then ceases at a population size when it levels up. So the pattern of growth produces a sigmoid or SA population growth curve here as we can see in this figure. So the population size at which growth stops is generally called as carrying capacity or K. So that is the theoretical maximum population in a population. So carrying capacity is the number of individuals of a particular population that the environment can support. At carrying capacity the birth rate must equals the death rate and population growth is equal to zero. So the growth stops at the carrying capacity and population size stabilizes here. The exponential model of population growth that is dn by dt that is equal to small r into capital N can now be modified to produce a model which is population growth in which the population growth is sigmoid. So it can be incorporated in this following terms. So the simplest way to do is to add an element that slows growth as population size approaches the carrying capacity. And this can be done by inserting a special parameter that is k minus n divided by k where the k represents the carrying capacity and n represents the population size. Now in dn by dt that equal to r max n into k minus n by k which represents the logistic equation here we can see that the subscript in R max indicates the maximum per capita rate of increase achieved under the ideal environmental condition. Because natural population are usually subject to factors such as disease, competition, so forth, the actual per capita rate of increase that is the realized R is generally less than the R max. The equation for sigmoidal population growth is called the logistic growth equation. So logistic growth equation represented by dn by dt that is is equal to rn into k minus n by k.
so the logistic model effectively has two components that is the original exponential term that is small r and capital n and a second term that is 1 minus n by k or k minus n by k so that function to reduce population growth as the population size approaches the carrying capacity so this particular term helps in the reducing the population growth when n is very smaller than k then term 1 minus n k is almost close to 1 and the population growth follows the exponential model that is dn by dt here is equal to small r and capital n as the population grows and approaches k that is when n is equal to k the term 1 minus n by k also approaches 0 which shows a slowing population growth and which approaches to stable population growth or zero population growth when n is very much larger than k then population is obviously declining when the population is small it increases rapidly but at a slower rate than that of the predicted exponential model as you can see in this figure the rate of population growth that is dn by dt is at its highest when the n is equal to k by 2 which is also called as inflection point and decreases at each approach as the k. So there is higher or highest population growth is achieved at k by 2 that is half of its carrying capacity. The relationship between the rate of population growth dn by dt and the population size n takes from a parabola that is we can see that when we represent this dn by dt and k we can see a parabolic form of growth which ultimately reaching maximum value at n is equal to k by 2. So the average rate of increase per capita is given by dn by dt into 1 by n. So if we represent the per capita growth or per capita increase in rate then we can represent it as follows that is in the y axis we can plot it as dn by dt into 1 by n in the absence of intraspecific competition the rate of increase is a is a constant and is at its highest that is at r or at point a thus dn by dt into 1 by n is equal to r if we rearrange it it will show a growing a growing population or it will represent the exponential growth form that is dn by dt is equal to rn if we add intraspecific competition then the net rate of increase per capita is unaffected when n is very close to zero that is at point a but it rises and approaches k and the net rate of increase per capita becomes zero at point b when it meets the k so when n is equal to k the per capita growth rate becomes zero so we assume a linear reduction in the per capita rate of increase as the result of intensifying intraspecific competition that is in the logistic growth model so this graph shows that at initially when there is no competition the growth rate is at highest that is at r or that is the r having the maximum rate of increase when the and when the n approaches k the dn by dt becomes zero that is the growth per unit time become zero i hope this video will help you to understand the concept of population growth and further I will upload many such videos which will help you to understand many more ecological concepts as well as other topics which is relevant to preparation of CSIR net. Thank you.